Our planet never ceases to amaze with its beauty and mysteries. Sometimes it seems that every corner of it has long been discovered and studied, but this is not the case. In this video, I invite you to get acquainted with some of the most unexplored territories on Earth. Enjoy the view. Sun Dong Cave is rightfully considered one of the most breathtaking places in all of Southeast Asia. This natural wonder is located in Vietnam, within the Phong NHA, Ke Bang National Park in Quang Binh Province. For many years, no one knew about the existence of the cave because it is situated in a remote area. To reach it, one must traverse dense jungles and cross several rivers. Sun Dung was first discovered in 1991 by a local farmer seeking shelter during a heavy rainstorm. However, since the indigenous people were afraid of this place, they simply forgot about the discovery. In 2009, British cavers accidentally rediscovered the entrance to the cave. When scientists entered, they were astounded by the size and beauty of Sun Dung. Since then, research on this cave has begun. Its depth is about 150 meters and its length is approximately 9,000 meters. The total volume is estimated at 38.5 cubic meters, making Sun Dung the largest cave in the world. Scientists have now explored 6,000 meters of Sun Dung's territory. Due to the presence of water and light filtering through crevices, this place is home to many unique flora and fauna. Researchers have found bears, parrots, bats, hundreds of butterfly species, and over 70 species of amphibians and reptiles inside the cave. Sun Dung turned out to be a separate beautiful world that had been hidden from human eyes for a long time. Did you know that there is a real hell on our planet? And it's called the Danakil Depression. The Danakil lies in the desert of the same name, in the northeast of Ethiopia. The landscapes of these lands impress with their uniqueness. Salt deposits of various shades, sulfuric geysers, and a bubbling lava lake in the crater of a volcano. There's nothing like it anywhere else. The air temperature in the Danakil is absolutely extreme. In winter, it rarely falls below plus 35 degrees Celsius, and in summer it can reach 63 degrees Celsius. The Danakil is recognized as the hottest and lowest place on Earth. The depression is located 125 meters below sea level. Undoubtedly, the Danakil depression attracts scientists. Conducting research in such conditions is very difficult, however. Many discoveries have been made in this place. Perhaps the most significant among them was the discovery of the remains of Australopithecus afarensis, more than 3 million years old. This find allowed the Danakil to be considered the cradle of hominids. Another interesting discovery for science was that a large number of various microorganisms live in the bubbling water coming out of the lava rocks. It is worth noting that the temperature of this water reaches 90 degrees Celsius. Moreover, it is saturated with acids, sulfur, and copper salts. But this does not interfere with the life activities of these bacteria at all. Despite the fact that the Donakil truly resembles hell, this place is very popular among tourists. In addition, there are several settlements located around the depression where people live. Heard and McDonald are the largest islands in the uninhabited archipelago of the same name, located in the southern part of the Indian Ocean. Heard Island is much larger than McDonald. It covers an area of 368 square kilometers. It represents the summit of an underwater volcano on the Kerguelen Plateau. The highest point on the island is called Mawson Peak, with an elevation of 2745 meters above sea level. Around 80% of its surface is covered with snow and ice all year round. Heard Island was discovered in 1853 by American seal hunter John Heard. The following year, another hunter named William MacDonald discovered the second island, which was later named in his honor. MacDonald Island covers an area of 2.5 square kilometers. Just like Heard, it was formed from volcanic rock. The entire territory of the island consists of cliffs and rocks. The highest point is 200 meters above sea level. For 20 years after their discovery, these two islands were visited by seal hunters. But after the animal population sharply decreased, they became uninhabited. In 1910, the entire archipelago became a possession of Great Britain. 
but in 1947 it was transferred to Australia. Now the archipelago is only inhabited by animals, and scientists occasionally land there for research purposes. A significant part of the Amazon rainforest remains inaccessible and untouched. Mostly this region is inhabited by tribes that reject any contact with civilization. The Javari Valley is the largest reservation of indigenous people in the Amazon. It is located on the border between Brazil and Peru. Its area is comparable to the size of Portugal and is 85,444 square kilometers. About 2,000 people from 14 tribes live in the valley. All of them are hostile to outsiders. In fact, such behavior is due to constant attacks by Brazilian poachers on the tropical forests. The indigenous people of Javari defend their territories and the nature surrounding them. It is important for these people that the forests remain pristine, but poachers are not concerned about this. The Javari people are far from civilization and progress. They have chosen a different path, life in unity with nature. And of course, their attempts to hold back armed poachers usually end tragically. These tribes are protected by Brazilian authorities, but poachers still continue to invade their territory and kill if the Javari hinder their hunting. Ilha da Queimada Grande, located in the Atlantic Ocean near the coast of Brazil, can be a real nightmare for people who are afraid of snakes. However, even if you are not afraid of these reptiles, you still will never be able to visit this place as the country's authorities prohibit entry. But why? The fact is that Ilha da Queimada Grande is home to one of the most dangerous species of snakes, the golden lancehead. Golden lanceheads belong to the pit viper family. Their body length ranges from 70 to 100 centimeters. The color can be light brown or yellow with triangular or square spots. These snakes are very dangerous to human health. Their bite causes rapid tissue necrosis, as well as acute renal failure and various internal bleedings. I think now you understand why the authorities strictly prohibit entry to the island. In the dense forests of Ilha da Queimada Grande, there are more than 10,000 golden lanceheads. The large number of snakes on the island with a small area is due to the fact that about 11,000 years ago, at the end of the Ice Age, they were cut off from the mainland. There are no mammals on this island, so it is very difficult for the animals to find food. They mainly feed on birds and insects. Despite the restrictions of the authorities, tourists still try to infiltrate the island, ignoring the fact that the bite of these snakes can be deadly. Tibet has long been enveloped in mysteries, partly due to Buddhist teachings and its isolation by impassable majestic mountains. One of the most mystical places in this region is Motuo County. Motuo is renowned for its untouched beauty, and Buddhists consider it a sacred place. Unfortunately, the county is cut off from the outside world due to lack of transportation access. For many years, Authorities attempted to build a road connecting Matuo to other counties, but avalanches and rockfalls occurred every time during construction. In the mid-1990s, a road was finally built, but it lasted only a few days before being destroyed by several landslides. Consequently, authorities abandoned road construction attempts as all were unsuccessful. In Tibetan, Motuo means mysterious lotus, and the region truly lives up to its name. It appears that natural forces oppose road construction, as if wishing to keep their secrets hidden from prying eyes, secrets that Motuo faithfully guards. Currently reaching this county requires crossing snow-covered mountains, nine rivers, and traversing a suspension bridge over a chasm. This route takes four days and is only suitable for the most courageous and prepared tourists. However, the effort is worth it to witness a true natural wonder. Located in the valley of the Tibetan Plateau, Motuo is known for its alpine meadows, forests, lakes, and rivers. Amidst the harsh snow-covered mountains, this place seems like a real green oasis, bringing peace and tranquility to people's hearts. Tristan da Cunha is one of the most remote places on our planet. However, this fact does not prevent people from inhabiting this island. 
Tristan da Cunha is one of the islands in the archipelago of the same name. It is located in the southern part of the Atlantic Ocean and is part of a British overseas territory. The island covers an area of 207 square kilometers. This island formed about a million years ago and has a volcanic origin. Almost the entire territory is occupied by the active volcano Queen Mary's Peak, with only a small plain in the northern part where people have chosen to live. Tristan da Cunha was discovered in 1506 by a Portuguese navigator, after whom the island is now named. The first settler of the island, at the end of the 18th century, was a native of Massachusetts, Jonathan Lambert. In 1816, the island became a possession of Great Britain. Tristan da Cunha gradually began to be settled, but there were few who wanted to be completely cut off from the world. Now its population is 269 people. All these people are descendants of the first settlers, eight men and seven women. Living on such an island is not easy. Firstly, because of volcanic eruptions, the last of which was in 1961. Secondly, because Tristan da Cunha is one of the most remote points in the world. It is located 2,816 kilometers from South Africa, 3,360 kilometers from South America, and 2,161 kilometers from the island of St. Helena. In other words, to reach any other populated area, the locals must travel more than 2,000 kilometers across the ocean. Such a journey takes about six days. Nevertheless, the residents of Tristan da Cunha are happy with their life and have no plans to leave. The island has a hospital, school, two churches, a small harbor, and a supermarket where you can buy any goods. The locals can also use public transport to reach their potato fields. Due to the climate, only potatoes are grown on the island. The islanders engage in lobster fishing and livestock farming. During the pandemic, the island was closed to visitors. But now tourists can once again visit one of the most remote populated places on our planet. In the Bay of Bengal in India lies North Sentinel Island. The white sandy beaches, fresh breeze and waves of the Indian Ocean might attract any tourist. However, North Sentinel Island is more of a hell than a paradise on Earth. The island is inhabited by the Sentinelese, indigenous people who reject any contact with civilization. They are extremely hostile and ready to attack any foreigner who approaches their territory. For this reason, Indian authorities strictly prohibit landing on the island. In 1981, the cargo ship Primrose ran aground near North Sentinel. The sailors were partly relieved that this happened near a large landmass where they could wait for help. When the crew members were about to leave the ship, they noticed people on the shore. However, the locals were armed with bows and spears, and their bodies were only covered by loincloths. It became clear that these were indigenous people, and they were hostile. Fortunately, the Primrose crew realized the danger and decided to stay on their ship. A few days later, they were evacuated by a rescue helicopter and managed to avoid an attack by the Sentinelese. Attempts to make contact with the islanders have been made repeatedly. In 1880, a British ship arrived at the island for this purpose with the naval officer Maurice Vidal Portman he even managed to take a Sentinelese family back to Port Blair, but even then, the indigenous people refused to communicate. The man and woman soon died from an unknown disease, and Portman decided to return the children to the island. It is surprising that Portman survived after two visits to North Sentinel. There are known cases when the indigenous people killed those who tried to establish contact with them. The last such incident occurred in 2018, when 26-year-old American traveler John Allen Chow tried to gift the islanders valuable and useful items but was killed. The Sentinelese have been guarding their island from foreigners for thousands of years. Now the population of this tribe is only about 100 people. Cape Melville is located on the eastern coast of the Cape York Peninsula in Australia. This place was discovered by Lieutenant Charles Jefferson in 1815 and was initially named Cape Stony, but was later renamed. Melville is part of the Australian Cape Melville National Park, which also includes two other islands. 
Cape Melville is unique for its huge boulders that act as a wall protecting the untouched wilderness from fires and other negative factors. For a long time, these stones made it impossible to conduct research in the area, so the dense tropical forests of Melville were dubbed the Lost World. In 2013, scientists from James Cook University, along with a team from National Geographic, embarked on an expedition to the summit of the Cape. As soon as the researchers entered the forests of Melville, they discovered a new, unexplored world of local inhabitants. The scientists admitted they were amazed by their discoveries. During their stay in the Melville Range, they discovered entirely new species of plants and animals. The first discovery was an unusual gecko, about 20 centimeters in length, with a long, slender body and large eyes. This species of gecko was named the leaf-tailed gecko, or Saltuarius eximius. Then, the scientists found small, light brown spotted frogs hiding in the crevices of the giant boulders. This species was named the blotched boulder frog. Another discovery was a new species of brown lizard, named the Cape Melville shade skink. In addition to animals, scientists also discovered entirely new species of plants. All these representatives of flora and fauna are endemic to Cape Melville. Cape York Peninsula is located at the northernmost point of the Australian continent. This territory is one of the most popular destinations for tourists who prefer wild islands. The peninsula was discovered by British navigator James Cook in 1770 and named after the Duke of York. The area of the peninsula is 137,000 square kilometers. These lands are considered some of the last unexplored regions on Earth. Although some areas are inhabited by indigenous people, the majority of York consists of untouched human tropical rainforests and savannas. This place is amazing. It intertwines two absolutely different landscapes, each uniquely beautiful in its own way. The eastern part is mountainous, while the western part consists of lowlands with sandy beaches. The Great Barrier Reef, stretching over 2,000 kilometers, lies along the eastern coastline. This territory is especially attractive to tourists as it resembles a tropical paradise. The flora and fauna of York are incredibly diverse, with over 100 species of animals and about 380 species of plants, some of which are endangered. York is a fantastically beautiful place with tropical forests, untouched wilderness, rivers and waterfalls, beaches and mountains. If you love to enjoy nature in its pristine form, you will undoubtedly fall in love with this peninsula. In November 1963, after a long eruption of the Vestmanajar submarine volcano, a small island with an area of just under 1.5 square kilometers emerged in Iceland. It was named Surtsey, after the fire giant Surtur from Germanic Scandinavian mythology. From the very first days after the island's emergence, research began, during which scientists were to observe the formation of life. For this reason, access to the island was available only to scientific personnel. These observations were very interesting. Within the first hours of the island's life, microorganisms appeared, and after two years, the land began to be covered with moss and lichen. By the early 1980s, the island was home to many species of plants and birds. During the research on Surtsey, an unusual and somewhat amusing story occurred. Tomatoes appeared on the island from nowhere. It is likely that one of the scientists dropped the vegetable and its seeds subsequently sprouted. This should not have happened, as all scientists coming to Surtsey are thoroughly inspected. According to research rules, bringing seeds and vegetables is strictly prohibited. By the way, as soon as the scientists noticed the tomato bush, they immediately destroyed it so as not to interfere with their observations. The Pitcairn Islands are located in the southern part of the Pacific Ocean and belong to the British Overseas Territory. The archipelago consists of five small islands of volcanic and coral origin, but only one of them, also named Pitcairn, is inhabited. The island's first settlers in 1790 were mutineers from the ship Bounty, who abducted several women from the island of Tahiti after killing their husbands. 
Gradually, other people started to arrive in Pitcairn, but some of them were relocated to Tahiti. In 1838, Pitcairn was officially declared a British colony. The population on the island began to grow and reached 233 people. As the island is just over 4.5 square kilometers in size, this population caused overcrowding and most people were sent to Norfolk. Currently, only 47 people live in Pitcairn, making it the least populated territory in the world. The island's population is gradually decreasing. There are almost no children left, as most parents send them to study in civilized cities. Surprisingly, the authorities offer even tourists to stay permanently, providing them with a house, a plot of land, and a small farm. But no newcomers agree to such a deal. Unfortunately, Pitcairn Island will one day become uninhabited, like all its neighboring islands. Sarisarinama is the oldest among the hundreds of table mountains with flat tops in the south of Guyana and Venezuela. It is distinguished by its dense majestic forests with trees reaching up to 25 meters in height. This region remained unexplored for a long time until November 1961, when pilot Harry Gibson, flying over Sarasarinama, spotted gigantic holes. His discovery piqued the interest of scientists, but venturing into the jungle to explore these sinkholes was extremely challenging. It took over 10 years to prepare for the first expedition. In 1974, researchers were airlifted to the mountain's summit by helicopter. They then descended into one of the holes using ropes. Initially, it was expected to find a lake at the bottom, but there was none. Unfortunately, the team underestimated their capabilities and couldn't climb out of the cave on their own. As a result, they had to cut down trees inside for helicopter evacuation, causing significant damage to the mountain's ecosystem. Another research group ventured to the summit of Sarasarinama two years later, discovering three more karst caves. The mountain hosts four massive sinkholes, the largest being Sima Humboldt, with a depth of 1350 meters. Local residents claim to often hear a malicious roar emanating from Sima Humboldt, believing the cave to be the home of an ancient evil spirit that abducts people. Mount Namuli is the second highest mountain in the Republic of Mozambique, in Southeast Africa, with an elevation of 2420 meters. Dense tropical forests are located at the base of Namuli, this area is known for its beautiful landscapes and unique flora and fauna. The mountain attracts the attention of scientists, but it is practically impossible to explore. Due to the extremely difficult terrain, these lands remain unexplored. The first expeditions at the base of Namuli were conducted in 1886 by British explorer Henry Edward O'Neill. These lands became the subject of study by ornithologists, but due to the civil war in Mozambique, Scientists did not return to Namuli until 1998. Then, rare species of animals and birds living exclusively in these forests were discovered. In 2014, scientists attempted to study the mountain's summit. Over a month, they made the ascent, and when they succeeded, they were only able to explore a small area, discovering several new species of ants. Namuli is considered a sacred mountain among the local residents. And perhaps this is not without reason, as no matter how many attempts are made to explore its territory, it remains an impregnable mountain with its unique untouched nature. The Mariana Trench is the deepest trench on Earth. The deepest part of the trench, known as the Challenger Deep, reaches nearly 11 kilometers below sea level. The Mariana Trench is located in the western part of the Pacific Ocean, near the island of Guam and the Mariana Islands. It has the shape of a crescent with a length of 2,540 kilometers and a width of 69 kilometers. This place remained virtually unexplored for a long time because the pressure at the deepest point of the trench exceeds the sea level pressure by a thousand times. However, scientists now have modern research tools and are studying the ecosystem of the trench. Thanks to this, we are learning more and more about this fantastic place. Surprisingly, the water temperature in the deep trench can rise to plus 4 degrees Celsius. 
This is due to the presence of a large number of hydrothermal vents. For example, at a depth of 1.6 kilometers, there are so-called black smokers. These hydrothermal vents eject jets heated to temperatures of 450 degrees Celsius. This water is rich in minerals and is very important for sustaining the life of deep sea inhabitants. Despite the absence of sunlight in the depths of the Mariana Trench and the seemingly inhospitable pressure, there is a large variety of living organisms. For example, at depths of up to 1,500 meters, there are jellyfish, goblin sharks, and hatchetfish. And at depths of up to 4,000 meters, there are octopuses, sponges, and ossidacs. But there is also life in even deeper parts of the trench. Imagine, at a monstrous depth of more than 10,000 meters, single-celled organisms called xenophyophores live. Despite the conditions, they have undergone gigantism and grown up to 10 centimeters in diameter. The deep sea ecosystem of the Mariana Trench once again proves how amazing and unpredictable our planet is. And that's all from me. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to rate it, subscribe to the channel and hit the bell. Your activity is the best reward for me. Thank you for your attention. See you soon. Goodbye.